The first good thing is the goodness of nature. God is the same as nature. The goodness in nature is God. These words sound like they could have been written yesterday, and I'd venture to say that they describe the spiritual outlook of many people today. People who see the spirit of life that goes by so many names is yet beyond all naming, seeing that as identical with the goodness of nature. If I didn't tell you otherwise, you might think that those words were written by some modern day minister, but they weren't. They were written by Sister Julian of Norwich about 700 years ago. Here's the whole quote, slightly adapted. The first good thing is the goodness of nature. God is the same as nature. The goodness in nature is God. The goodness in nature feels great delight to be our father. The goodness in nature takes great delight to be our mother. We experience a wondrous mix of well and woe. The mingling of both well and woe and distress in us is so astonishing that we can hardly tell which state we or our neighbor are in. That's how astonishing it is. Now, Julian of Norwich was a medieval mystic who lived from 1342 to about 1429. With her book, Revelations of Divine Love, she became the first known female writer in the English language. And here's what's perhaps most interesting about her hopeful and uniting message. She wrote it not during a time of abundance and prosperity. She wrote it during the bubonic plague, which killed about 25 million people in Europe. Like us, she was living in a wondrous mix of well and woe. She lived as an anchorite in a tiny cell, but interacted with the people of Norwich, the second largest city in England at the time, through a window from which she offered spiritual guidance. In her outlook, there was no separation between God and nature, or for that matter of self and other. She didn't suffer from the dualisms that so many humans do, the dividing of people, and the separation of physical nature from her concept of something more. For her, God was in all things at all times, and all people were in nature. So there was an intermingling, which she found beautiful and hopeful, even in a time of terrible suffering. She was a wonderfully creative writer. She made up the word wanting, which I'd like to use more often. And she also made up the word enjoy. This was the same woman who said, all will be well, and all will be well, and all manner of things shall be well. How astonishing, given that she was writing during the time of the plague. Her understanding of mingling of God and nature and humans and nature is so similar to the idea of interbeing, being taught by Buddhist teacher Thich Nhat Hanh, the writer Charles Eisenstein, and many others. And of course, it's very much in keeping with the outlook of many Unitarians, such as, for example, the composer Jim Scott, who wrote a hymn in our Teal hymn book called The Oneness of Everything. In order to heal the wounds of the earth and the wounds within ourselves, we must heal from the sense of separateness we know so well. Indeed, the separateness we are taught to feel. The dividedness from the earth, from others, and from our deepest selves. The term Earth Day is actually quite curious. How could we separate out only one day to love, nurture, and sustain being itself? If we truly believe that we are inseparable from the earth, tiny parts of one living and breathing organism, perhaps it could be called Love Day or Life Day. But even then we would be creating a dividing line. After all, the love of life can never be confined to a day. Love transcends such limitations. 
Our hope then is to deepen in our sense of loving interdependence with life and earth so that when beautiful Gaia is calling us on as we will sing together in a few minutes, it is truly our deepest and truest selves that is doing so because we are not separate from Gaia at all. This understanding is, I believe, at the heart of all spiritual and religious wisdom, whether it was expressed hundreds of years ago or in our present day. True wisdom transcends limitations of time, place, and culture, and it does so because we are one. Here's the writer Charles Eisenstein in a recent book called Climate, A New Story. We are not alone here. Something is watching. Something is listening. That something that is listening is everything. Earth sky, water, air, rocks, trees, animals, plants, along with beings we do not see and that have no name in English anyway. Matter is sentient, watching, listening. God, you might say, is in all things and nothing is not God. Woven as we are in the interdependent web, we are each of us embraced always in the sacredness of life, and we are able to love and care for the earth, no matter who and where we are. There are so many ways we can do that. So many ways to do justly now and go humbly now in alignment with the oneness that is earth. We can engage in local action love a particular place like Duffins Creek and join together with others who are working together to care for it. We can support these efforts through our financial contributions as we've been invited to do today. We can speak up by writing, by lobbying, by protesting. And there are other, perhaps less obvious, but no less important ways that we can nurture our well interbeing ways such as slowing down and listening to trees, rocks, plants, and breath. Such as allowing space and time for human viewpoints that are not our own, because we are all part of the same being. Expressing and deepening our love for the earth through art, music, poetry, and the appreciation of beauty in all forms. Gently catching ourselves when we other another person, place, or thing. Noticing, too, when we act or think in ways that maintain the sense of competition and division that has defined our lives for so long. Just as we return again and again to our breath in meditation or return in love after disagreement, we can catch ourselves in the story of separation and listen instead for the song of oneing, which is always singing in our hearts. And when we are daunted, as we surely will be, we can extend kindness to ourselves as we would any other living thing. I invite you, and I invite myself, especially in this time of pandemic, when we might feel quite divided and limited at times, to find a way, as often as you can, to touch base with the something more within you, the earth consciousness, if you will. Whatever way you do this, and there are countless ways. You will know which ones work best for you. You will be caring for your own well-being, which is a form of caring for the earth when we understand ourselves to be part of it. Returning ourselves to a sense of peace, of well-being, of groundedness and centeredness, extends then to others 
who benefit from our health in this interdependent way. And it also positions us to do the next right thing that is within our scope to nurture and care for the earth from wherever we are. No one can tell you exactly what shape that will take for you. But when you respond to life from that deep knowing that you are a part of it, that you belong to it, you are an inherently good part of it, when you respond from what knows that you can give what is needed and essential now, when we know this, we may no longer be limited by our feelings of disconnection, division, and conflict. I hope and pray that you and I may be freed of these limitations, that together we may care for this earth in faith, hope, and love. <laughs>